Hello, family. Welcome back to the Explore the Extraordinary podcast. My name is Betty, and today I'm joined by Tammy. And Tammy is a very active member in the IONS community. She's a near-death experiencer. She's also a super talented artist. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about that today, too. Uh, I'm really grateful for your willingness to serve our community at IONS today. I'm going to toss it over to you to share a little bit about yourself, and then we'll go into a dialogue. Great, great. Hi, everybody. Um, I am so excited to be here. As you can imagine, the, a near-death experience story can cover an infinite amount of things. So a little bit of background about me is that I had my most recent near-death experience in um, 2013. And in that experience, I learned that I had had prior near-death experiences, these um situations where I thought they were just part of childhood or part of life. And I could see the infinite being that I was, um, not just the person in the human body and living this specific life. I was able to see the connections that I had through these ancestral lines and all the way leading up into the possibilities of the choices of where I could go in this lifetime. Um, so yeah, it was, it was really, um, a very profound experience in 2013. I was dying from cancer treatments and I decided that I wanted to see if it was possible to live. Um, I was, I'd been laying for a week on my couch, trying to pull myself back into my body. I could feel myself floating out of my body, observing myself laying on the couch and feeling just in so much pain and so exhausted and really just like, you know, I've lived a good life. Uh, when I got the cancer diagnosis, I had told people, um, that I didn't want to fight, that I would be accepting what was happening. It was a, an action of radical acceptance, going through the treatments, doing my best to live, but also just understanding that, um, it's, it's okay. Like death is not a thing to be afraid of and that it's okay to die. And there were things that I wanted to live for. There were things that I still wanted to experience. So I called a friend and asked if um, they could drive me to the hospital. And on the way to the hospital, I had what um, she described as like a seizure. And I went out and I popped out of my body and was immediately free of all of the like being held in this and um, the pain and the suffering and all of the human things and, the, and that we experienced. But what I did get to do was I just popped right back into love, pure love existence in my home state. And just felt this huge expansiveness, like everything, everything, everywhere, all at once, possibilities, um, knowledge, understanding connection. And for me, that was the greatest thing was feeling and understanding the full connection of all of our energies and all of that love that we are as humans and saying, wow, we're, we're interconnected. Um, and I wanted to shout back to everyone back home on earth, like, oh, I see it now. I see that we are love. It isn't just that we do love as an action. We are created of love. We are the energy that powers us is love. And being filled with that and being back in the home state from which I believe I, I came from in this place and meeting with my council of people and reconnecting with all of the knowledge and the multitude of Let's say like lives and experiences beyond a human experience, you know, uh, if you, you would want to call it alien, if you would want to call it spiritual, all of these things. And I, I felt so much myself and strength. I'm like, I could do anything. And so when they gave me a chance to come back, they said, you, you know, you can go back. You've done it before. And I thought, what do you mean I've done this before? And they said, well, you've, you've come and gone a few times. But in the home state, it felt like it was just going out for a coffee and coming back. It wasn't like I've gone for years and times. Um, the ability, I understood the ability to, to kind of pop in and out 
and that my soul wasn't just going and having a human earth experience. It was also going and doing other types of work and experiences and other parts of the, the metaverse and the universe, all of this infinite expansiveness. And I, I was so refreshed from, I think kind of feeling like I was tapped back into that, that pure love. It was getting a plugged in infusion. I, said, I can go be human again. I can face all of those problems that I have when I go back. And I had a lot of problems to come back to a lot of problems. So I was coming back into broken body, broken relationships, some dangerous stuff going on in, in my life. Um, and also the responsibility I was going to have um, to come back into that. But I felt so possible about it. Like when you, when you see the human experience from that universal uh, umbrella, you go, it, it really is a gift and it really is a miracle, an absolute miracle that we can embody into this sensory experience. And is it worth it to feel the pain you get as a sensory experience to go along with that love that you also get to experience here. And I, and I just said, yes, I'm, I'm totally in. And while I was home, I had a chance to explore some of the intellectual things that I didn't quite grasp in my human brain. Um, I had a chance to explore my own timeline and paths of, of experience. Um, what I came here for as a child, how that worked and didn't work in coordination with the people that I, I are part of my soul family that I came with and my determination, even when faced with, um, even, even when faced with injury and possible death at younger ages in my life, at these earlier near-death experiences that I was supported and I was cared for and I was held and that it was all going to be okay. And erased this concept of fear that if I know I can go home when I'm done being a human, what do I have to fear? What, what is there that we really have to worry about and all these things? And then also knowing I'm going to come back into this body with its DNA and its experiences and that it's a, it's a mental game. It's an emotional game. It's, it's all of these things, but play the game and play it big and do the things that you think you're afraid to do, because that ultimately came down to what is it that I have to do? So when they said, you get a chance to go back, um, do you want to, is there anything you want to go back for? And I said, yes, there are two things I want to go back for. And they said, okay, we, we have one request of you. And I was like, I can do anything. Sure. And they said, well, go back and tell the stories. And I knew what that meant. That, that meant that I had to get through the fear of my childhood and my young adult life and even my current adult life at that time, which was that I, I, I was afraid to speak up. I was afraid to tell my own stories. I was, um, a photographer. I was a journalist and a writer, and I was always telling other people's stories and I cared very much to represent those well, but to speak my own story was to put myself in danger, to speak out against people in my family who had been, uh, violent and abusive to speak up against, uh, people in society who were being violent and abusive and, you know, co-opting women's lives and things like that. And it's been a process in these past 10 years or so to heal my body, to repair relationships and to transform into the person that I am today, who is creating artwork and writing stories and working on a book that is just going to put it all out there because what's the worst thing that can happen to me? Somebody going to kill me. Okay. I go home again and I'm fine and it's good. Um, so that, that is my, that's, that's the basic part of the arc. Um, I, I wish to be brave while I'm here. I wish to be more fearless. I wish to be more supportive and loving with all of the people that I encounter. And also the biggest lesson I think right now is to be more loving to myself and allow things that I didn't allow while I was being performative. Um, the title of my book is called Thank You for Being, and it's still in progress. I'm, I'm still tweaking it a little bit. And for me, that is about um, just 
all people have to do is just come and be the person you came to be. Let your soul manifest into the person you were supposed to be. So people, if they show up as their authentic self, their light shines, their love shines, their fears shine, whatever is happening for them, that is that to me is just they're embodying their pure, true soul self and love. And and that's what I want to thank everybody who's here doing this human thing. Thank you for being. Thank you for just being here. That's great. Thanks. You said so much. You really did. You, uh, you said so much. I wrote down a lot of stuff that you were talking about because there's a lot of aspects that I would love to get into. Okay, the first great. thing I think that I really kind of want to hear about is you know, like you said that you were going to have to come back into this broken body, that you were undergoing cancer treatment. And that is what led to this experience. So what was your experience like coming back health wise? How long did you have to continue to deal with your health problems? Still dealing with the health problems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I came back, I was in my fifth round of chemo when that happened. And, um, and I went in and said, uh, I just had a near death experience. I'm not doing any more chemo. We're just going to let the body do what it's going to do. And my doctor was really gracious about it. She said, Oh, I totally get that. But would you be open to surgery to remove the tumor? And, um, long story short, it probably took me a few years to come to the realization of this miracle, but she got in there to do, the, do the surgery. Um, and, I don't know for any of you who have been through cancer and those of you who really don't understand like how torturous our medical uh, treatments are like right before you go into surgery without anesthesia, they put you on a mammogram machine with needles this long, no anesthesia. And they go and target where that live, they measure and see where that live tumor is and they mark it for the surgeon. So, I mean, I'm going to be graphic here, but this is, this is what we need to understand. Like we're putting our bodies through like so much pain and it was just so painful. But at the end of the whole thing, the surgeon came back, she goes, we checked you before you went in. The tumor had not shrunk with all of these chemo treatments. And, um, and my prognosis was one to five years with this type of cancer. She said, so I got in there and she said, I went to remove the tumor and it was all scar tissue. And I was like, right on. Good. But when I was home, they said, you, we're not fixing these things, right? We're not going to fix everything for you to go back to puppies and rainbows and butterflies. You're, you're going to have to still work through the process that you're here to, to learn. And so I've, I've had, um, cognitive functioning, auditory processing, functioning, body aches, like all of those, uh, joint pain, bone loss, all from the treatments, you know, aging, all, all the things that, that humans do. Um, but that was a miracle. Like that really was an absolute miracle to get one little gift of the tumor. Just, it was just gone. And I'm, I, and I've been healthy for 10, 11 years now since, since then. And that's, that's a big deal when they tell you, you've got a year to five years. That is a miracle. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. that uh, incredible. I was hoping that you had a a story like that. I was like, this, this question <laughs> yeah. could be loaded. I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. Um, thank you for sharing that. Another thing that you said was that you're able, that you were able to see the human experience from a universal perspective. And I'm wondering if that's something that you've been able to carry with you since your experience. I, I think that is a constant tension of being in the human experiences that we get so mired down. I get so mired down in the day to day, like, how am I going to work to make enough money to pay the bills to, you know, buy the food that's so expensive and, and pay the, you know, housing prices that are going up and all these things. And then I go <laughs> again, like, it's okay. Um, for me, I, I created a piece of, of art around this too, is this perfect balance of yin yang, which is that we're not going to get all these incredibly beautiful experiences without having the, the shadow side and the, and the challenge side for me to have seen from the home state, the challenge side of things, you see the beauty and the light in that. So when we call it darkness or we call it shadow, that's so much information that actually for me has helped transformation so much better to understand people 
people are all, if, if somebody says they've got a perfect life, are they hiding something? Are they, are they, are they burying something that's really painful for them? Maybe, maybe they have had a, had a perfect life and they're coming back here for that. And maybe a, a past life was tougher, but for me, it's, it's finding that constant balance with everyone that I encounter and accepting that the things I can change are in me and the things I can accept are outside of me. And I trust that whatever is happening for other people, it's okay. It's okay. Um, I don't need to entangle or enmesh or engage with it in a way as I used to. I don't need to fix it. But that's part of that full human experience is it is an arc that is going up and down and up and down. Sometimes it's it's all good and great. Sometimes it's challenging. But yeah, it's... It, I don't know. I, I could, we could all probably talk about that for weeks and weeks. It is, um, it's beautiful and it's hard, but it's okay. Yeah. Well, you know what I love about people who have had, you know, these experiences is that you're still coming back to the human experience. So you could be downloaded with all the information in the world, but you still get squeezed back into this little body and you have to have the human experience which leads to my next question, because we're talking, you're talking about courage. That's what I hear in your story, like the courage to come back, the courage to speak out, the courage to be creative, the courage to, you know, like live your passion. And so I'm curious, what kind of fears come up for you now? I hear you saying that you want to live bravely and fearlessly, but what kind of, let's, let's get human for a second. What sort of fears come up for you in the day to day? I, I think there's, uh, maybe two fears. One is that, okay, I'll start, start here. When we're, when we're babies and children, our core family is our survival. And for me to speak up and say the truth about some things that have happened in my life, not pointing fingers at other people, just like, this is saying, this is my experience. This is what's happened to me. Um, you know, being sexually assaulted, being, you know, having corporal punishment as a child, things that really hurt my physical body and hurt my emotional self, that those people who hurt me will want to come and hurt me again for exposing them, right? Like that's a very big childhood wound, but it also carries into our adulthood too. Like I've worked for some places where people have been treated people horrifically. They, they've marginalized, they've shamed, they've done this. And if I speak up against those people, I'm going to be... I'm not, I'm going to be unsafe. And that's what I have to constantly remind myself that I am safe. I am an autonomous being who is held in the light and love of my creation and that those people can hurt me, but they can't end me. And I am an infinite being. They are infinite beings. And, and I've hurt people. I've done horrible things to people that I am so sorry for. And I regret I did the best I could with what I had at the time. I think everyone's doing the best they can with what they have at the time, but I'm also allowed to say it. We're all allowed to tell our stories. We're all allowed to have our authentic experience. And, you know, I, I come out in support of people who are LGBTQIA. I have trans friends and I support people who want to embody themselves in what ever ways they want. And that is a dangerous thing in our society today. And, and I'm like, am I willing to risk my soft, fragile aging, you know, body to speak up for those people? Absolutely. I am. And I know it's going to come with threats. I know it's going to come with, you know, um, people who won't want to talk to me again, which I guess, you know, this was the second part is that that fear of being injured. The second part is fear of not being loved because we are here to be loved. I feel like I, I love so much, but it's an energy exchange. And to feel like you can be cut off from love, that is to feel a different type of death. And that I think is a, the biggest challenge here is to be in community to love and allow yourself to receive love and to be authentically who we are and see who shows up that we can have that energetic love exchange with. 
without, without, you know, without fearing that just going, I trust it's possible for this to all work. I love, thank you for that reflection. Uh, that's really beautiful. And then it has me thinking about the concept of unconditional love versus transactional love. But I like the way that you put it, that it is an energy exchange. And I think that that's something that we discover on the human level. Um, you know, like when I think about the infinite, that's unconditional love. Like I am always and forever loved. And I think that we have a deep knowing of that, you know, as people that are on the spiritual path. But again, we're having a human experience and there's limitations in the human, perceived limitations in the human experience anyway. Um, so, but thank you for getting vulnerable and authentic. You muted yourself. Thank you. <laughs> I know that it gives other people permission to be yeah. vulnerable and authentic as well when we do that. So thank you for your vulnerability. Uh, another thing that came up while you were talking that I definitely want to get into is you talked about other universes, other timelines, soul family, soul contracts. That's a big, huge thing. Is there one of those things that you feel like you want to share a little bit about? Oh, I love the, all of it, all of it. Well, we've got our time. Um, wow. I think that the timelines are interesting um, in that, I don't know, I I do meditations here uh, in my life. Um, I started meditating very consistently when I was going through cancer experiences. And I remember being able to feel out of my body, which was a remembering of my childhood and going out of my body and astral traveling and dreamscapes and things like that, seeing and understanding some future experiences, seeing and understanding some past experiences, being able to see people outside of their body and who their pure souls are. And one of the, the joys I've had here, um, I'm in Boulder, Colorado, which is a little esoteric metaphysical. There's a lot of that around here, being able to do these meditation groups where We've said, you know, the, the collectively, let's get get our energy together and let's feel into where the earth needs healing. Let's feel into where we can go outside of this earth experience and, and journey to the tree of knowledge, for example, or visit some other planetary um, beings or, or ourselves as those planetary beings, right? Like another manifestation of my soul energy is busy over here on another planet, um, ex having a different experience. And my human self brings these energies together in a meditation or in an astral journey, however you'd like to talk about it and feeling like, oh, here's, here's a planet where there is growth and, and healing and love. And it's not going through the battleground that is earth and reminding myself that, that we've, we've got this, or for me leading a meditation and allowing other people, being a guide or a companion with other people as they go to some experience that they've had. And I know that is way out there for a lot of people, but I want everyone to imagine the full infinite possibilities of the energy that we are. And if you can imagine it, as far as I think it exists, like if you can imagine it, it exists and be the biggest imagination people that we can, right? When we go to see a movie and we watch how like in the movie free guy, he came to the realization he could play the game and he didn't have to kill people. And he could just, be kind and earn his points by being kind and looking out for others and take care of his community. Like we should imagine ourselves in these roles that are so incredible and expanding and universal and, and play it, play the role. I mean, what, what, what else, what else are we here to do? Like be the biggest thing. Um, so those are, those are a lot of, <laughs> Those are a lot of, a lot of the kind of things that, you know, try it, enjoy yeah, it. I love that. Yeah. Because we we're talking about infinity and the, I, it's so hard to conceptualize what does that mean, but it literally means everything, everything, everything. So I love that you're saying that if you can imagine it, 
even if it didn't already exist, maybe you just created it in that thought of imagination. Maybe it sparked right there. That's all that it takes. Betty, you're saying exactly the thing. We are creativity. Like love is the energy from which we're formed. And our role, I believe, is creativity. Create things and create things that are doing some good in the world and create things that are doing um, some fun delightful things in the world. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible what we have is the human potential aided by plants, aided by animals, aided by the air that we breathe, aided by the outer space experience, whatever, whatever drives your, whatever drives you. <laughs> yes. And, you know, and creativity can be expressed in a lot of different ways. Like for you, you have a very tangible way of expressing creativity. You're a wonderful artist. And I'm look- I will have links in the liner notes of this episode for people to, to connect with you so that they can see your art. Uh, and also there's other ways to be creative. You know, like I when I clean my house, it's an act of creation. <laughs> You know, I'm exercising my creativity in that way to create a conscious space for myself. So I love talking about that aspect of the spiritual journey as well, the creativity. I do want to ask you one other thing, and then maybe we'll talk about your creative journey too. I want to talk about, you said that you were with your council. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if there's some sort of physical attributes or what exactly did you see or feel? And then maybe if you can just touch on the concept of soul family as well. Yeah. What I found was really interesting in this near-death experience um, was that I did not go through a tunnel or light or meet up with family members. I just like pop back into the control station (laughs) of of where um, some activity was going on with with the people that I'm I'm connected with, the souls that I'm connected with. Whereas when I was three-ish, three and a half years old, I had a surgery back then and I did not react well to the anesthesia. I popped out of my body and I was with um, ancestral. I was with grandparents. I was with, with people in the family. And so I've had the, the different experiences of, of those and, you know, who shows up in support. And so my counsel felt to me in that, in this, uh, this near death experience of, these are the people, these were the beings I was created with from the beginning of time. These are, these are the people. And then I could look out from the, you know, the oval or the pod where we were and know that here was another pod of, of soul family people to go and have an experience with. It was almost like collectively would say, right, who wants to go have the adventure of being this type of person in this experience at this time in a, in a human timeline. And so I had my, my core group, but I also had these other groups of people. Um, and, and seeing for me that, you know, I, I made an agreement to come here to support my, my mom and dad. And when that didn't work out, I was going to exit at a young age. And then I was like, "Eh, I'll just go back and I'll go through some other stuff. And it, when my mom passed, um, I was with her when she passed and she, she died at a pretty young age. She was 63 and she had had a lot of suffering and physical and emotional suffering in her life. But I was with her when she passed and to see her body and her face return to light and joy as she was making that transition and leave the weightiness of the human experience with her. Um, immediately after she passed, she, she came back into my life and it was, she said, I, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Let's, let's fix some of the things that, that we were supposed to do in that lifetime. I'm going to support you now. And she showed me things in my dreams. She guided my intuition. Um, Sometimes it was in little puzzles. Sometimes it was very clear, but she's a strong presence that remains with me. She even showed up for my sisters. And, um, and one of them said she came that my mom came in and gave her a hug. And she said, Oh, she said, I'm not ready for this. Like, let it go. My other sister had a situation with her 
phone keep giving my mom's birthday on it instead of the time she turn it off turn it back on all these things and i was like hey if they're scared of this i'm not i'm open to it let's let's coordinate and do these things and i've since met um you know since that some of my guides who have ancestral people who've been around since you know the the 1400s i went into a museum once and i saw a picture of myself and had this whole knowing of that past life that I lived. And I just started crying because I grieved for that past life. And I immediately felt like I needed to call my human in real time family. And I thought, you can't do that. Like I can't, I, I went from one lifetime and passed away in the sixties to being born in 70. Like I had a really quick turnaround and you know, so these soul families, it, it's, to me, it is, again, that full, like, creative opportunity to say, I'm going to go to Earth, which I see is this incredible sensory playground, and I'm going to have this experience, and here's the group of people I'm going to do it with. And unfortunately, some of the people that we're doing that with are going to push our buttons and make us mad. They're going to hurt us. They're gonna, They're going to push us into this like tight squeeze from which we can come out and become who we really wanted to be while we're here. I am grateful for that and it sucks and I'm grateful for it. Oh my goodness. That was really well said. I like that, you know, and it's a, a very rooted in realism. It's not like you come into spiritual awareness and now every person that you encounter is you know, a, a, a person in light. It's like, oh yeah, we still have ver a very human experience of conflict and resolution and unconditional love and forgiveness. And I feel like those are all parts of the spiritual journey too. Exactly. Well, when you're home in your, in your home state in pure love and pure infinite knowledge and understanding of everything and you go, okay, you know what? I'll go, I'll go in the sensory playground for a while. I'm good. And then you get beat up and you're like, oh, well, that was a lot. I'm going to go back home now. And then you go home. And, and, you know, this tells me things like, you know, the people who are afraid to die, I want to give them so much support in like, you are going to be so okay. And you're going to be so much, you're going to go back to yourself and imagine all of the beauty and the love that, that you carry with you from this lifetime into that soul knowledge when, when you go home. And I don't know, I, I think we, as a culture here in the United States, um, the way that we welcome people in through birth, nine months of preparation, uh, getting ready, making plans, enjoy like the excitement about that. I, I want to go out in death and I would love for people to go out in death with that same type of loving care and preparation and joyousness and celebration of like, thank you for having been here. Thank you for all that you did while you were here and you did the best you could and we love you. And we're gonna, instead of stopping you from dying, we're gonna hold your hand and make sure you're not alone when you do it. Like how beautiful would that be if wow. we welcomed that, that transition? Yeah, I would even take it one step further because obviously we don't know when we're going to die. Well, some people don't. I mean, so I guess some people do, but if we just treated every day like that, yes. if every day could just be treated as if your loved one might not be here tomorrow and and to have that celebration of life and existence and experience. Yeah, that's really beautiful. I'm going to hold that vision with you. I really love that. Um, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about your creativity. I mean, like your art is incredible. I'm such a big fan of you and what you do. Yeah. And I want to ask, you know, were you creative before your experience? Has this always yeah. been a piece of you? And yeah, just share a little bit about that journey. Absolutely. I think I came into this world uh, wanting to be a storyteller. I wrote my first book when I was seven years old, you know, a little cartoon book. I love drawing. Um, but I was, I was raised in, in, in an environment of like, you must do the steady thing. You must be responsible, like all these kind of rules. And I mean, I love to dance, just things I'm doing now that I didn't do before. Um, and I, I do my art through photography. I think you could, I do some painting and it's all intuitive, 
but even this this picture behind me with all the bubbles and things like that on it i use that to illustrate part of the story of my near death experience of being able to be in that near death experience i could all information was available like you know you were talking about downloads our human bodies cannot hold all all of information's existence like it's too much so I taking these bubbles, I imagined each bubble was a packet of information and I had a little, you know, blowing bubbles. And then when you, you, you're like, okay, now I'm studying the information, blow the bubble. And then even more bubbles come out. And I, and I wanted to illustrate like this beautiful, fun, funky way of doing things and, um, and knowing and learning and, and accessing information and I don't have a plan when I make my art. I, I sometimes I just take my camera somewhere and I and I and I listen to the trees. I listen to the flowers. I love nature photography. Um, and and I'll be like, what should I be looking at? And I see the clouds form into shapes. You know, people have. There's a whole hashtag on um, Instagram, hearts in nature. There are heart shapes in nature everywhere. And, and people get so delighted by these little signs. It's like, just follow intuition, feel what images come, let messages come to, to you through the water, through the air, through nature, whatever that is. And when I make a picture and I share it, um, I if, if people connect with it, I'm like, oh, great. I connected with somebody else who sees something in that. And if people don't see something in it, they're at a frequency where they resonate with another artist. And it's all, it's all for me about connecting through these, the visual imagery, the auditory um, stimulus and music or dance when we're connecting our bodies and we're moving and we're making sure our lymph nodes are, are clearing out and things like that through movement. All of that is the creativity. I love that. That's so beautiful. And yeah, I thank you for your service to the collective by sharing your art and your process. So I want to see if there's anything else that you'd like to share to feel more complete about our time together today. I could literally, we could, there's so much to talk about. I mean, I have like a million other questions. We'll have to do a part two, but okay. is there anything else that you can think of that you'd like to share right now? Yeah. I'd, I'd like for people to think about where they are in their lives and what type of metamorphosis can we go through to have the experiences that we want to have and it's all choices and there are timelines where we choose this you know it's like sliding doors a timeline where we choose this and a timeline where we choose that in my experience whatever we do is the right thing so not making a choice choosing a choosing door B, whatever it's to me, it's all going to lead us back to the lessons that we came here to experience or the, the, some type of aspect of our soul that is here to do, um, uh, a thing in this timeline and in this universe. Um, so remember that we have choice and that we have an opportunity to connect in with our, uh, soul selves at any time through whatever mechanism you do, if that's through art or meditation or plant medicine, whatever that is, and let yourself be true to yourself. Like all, all I'm here to do is just to be the greatest me and for, for me to support other people and being the greatest them and wherever we can speak up to allow people to have that experience. And we can speak out against tyranny, or we could speak out against, you know, systems that control us and try to make us something that we're not like, let's just go, you know, fly our, our freak flags and have a great time and feel brave and feel fearless and feel supported. And I would love to be able to be a better person at receiving that support. And so if anybody also feels this way and wants to comment when we post this, um, that they are sending energy and support for us to have that energy reciprocation. Thank you. Thanks so much, Tammy. I just had this moment while you were talking and I thought, wow, I'm so lucky 
that I get to be around people like this, that this is my reality. This is our reality right now. Just talking about, you know, these huge concepts, these beautiful experiences, and we get to consciously connect with each other. So thank you again for your service to our community and we'll see you next time. Bye.